This video covers the contents on the physics syllabus on ultrasound. Please note that if you're doing double science, you are not required to know this uh, for your physics content. The syllabus in the physics about ultrasound says the following. Ultrasound waves have a frequency higher than the upper limit of hearing for humans. Ultrasound waves are partially reflected when they meet a boundary between two different media. The time taken for the reflections to reach a detector can be used to determine how far away such a boundary is. And this allows ultrasound waves to be used for both medical and industrial imaging. In the sound section of the syllabus, you will have looked at the basic structure of the ear. You'll remember that there's an eardrum, which is a membrane that vibrates when sound enters the ear. This touches onto some solid bones, which transfer the vibrations across to a fluid inside your ear. The upper limit for hearing in humans is 20,000 hertz. You can write that as 20 kilohertz. And you might have to explain the reason for that. It is simply that the bones in the ear cannot vibrate faster than that. This sets an actual physical limit on the range of hearing that we have. So because the bones can't vibrate at over 20,000 hertz, then we cannot hear sounds above 20,000 hertz. And those sounds are called ultrasound because they are beyond, that's ultra beyond sound. You need to be familiar with two types of imaging. First of all, industrial imaging, and then medical imaging. So what does this word imaging mean? Well, it simply means to make something that is not visible to your eye, visible. So you are able to see what you can't see, and that is imaging. Now in industrial imaging, this is quite often used to find out whether a metal has got a crack in it. So while an aircraft is on the ground, it will be inspected using this technique to make sure that there aren't any hidden cracks inside the metal parts. Now to do this, we need to have an ultrasound transmitter that will generate ultrasound waves and we need to have an ultrasound detector. The ultrasound detector is connected to an oscilloscope and is the, it is the oscilloscope that converts the information to something that is visible on a screen. So that part, the oscilloscope, is doing the imaging for us. The examiners quite often ask questions about what you see on an oscilloscope and how to interpret that for what is going on. So here we have a situation where we have the transmitter and the detector wired up to the oscilloscope and you can see that there is a large spike, then a gap, then a small spike. Now this is what you'll see if there is no crack in the metal. As I said, you need to be able to interpret those two spikes. So the oscilloscope will show the tall spike, and that is where the ultrasound pulse has been transmitted. And then the second spike is where the sound has been reflected from the bottom of the block of metal. Now you might be asked, why is the second spike smaller than the first spike? 
and you would simply say that some of the energy that was transferred into the metal by the transmitter has been absorbed by the metal itself and so the returning pulse is transferring less energy and therefore it is smaller on the trace. So what would we see if there was a fault or a crack inside the metal? Well, we would see a third spike on our oscilloscope trace. So as before, we have the first spike, which is the largest, which is where the ultrasound has been transmitted. And then you'll have two other spikes, one where the sound has been reflected from the crack, which I've labelled A, and the other from where the sound is reflected back from the bottom of the block of metal. So that's the letter B. So the information on there can now tell us that there is a crack in the metal, but it also gives us another piece of information, and that is where the crack is. So the position of the crack can be worked out. In the example I've given here, A is two thirds of the way to B. Therefore, the crack is two thirds of the way through the block. So our second use of ultrasound is in medical imaging. And the best known use of this is in uh, the scanning of unborn babies, which is called prenatal scanning. Natal means birth, so prenatal would mean before birth. And the key piece of physics here, if you're asked to explain how this works, is that every time the ultrasound crosses the boundary between two different tissues, some of it is reflected. Or you could say that the ultrasound is partially reflected. That means that some of the ultrasound continues deeper down. So here I've made things considerably simpler than they actually are. But if you're going to be explaining this to the examiner, you need to keep it relatively simple. So I've considered here three waves. We've got the ultrasound transmitter transmitting the waves. And we have at A, and this is drawn for you in red, some of the waves are reflected as they pass from the woman's skin that's one medium, to the fluid, that's the second medium. And that will be uh, imaged on the computer monitor as surface A. At B, we've got some of the waves are now reflected as they pass from the fluid into the baby. And that will give us a second line on the computer monitor. And then I've uh, said at C, we've got some of the waves are reflected as they pass from the baby back into the fluid again. And that will give us yet another line on our computer monitor. Now, of course, on the way through, you'll get a reflection from the baby's spine, uh, from the internal organs of the baby, one, one where they enter, one where they leave. Every time the wave goes from one tissue or one medium to another, you'll get some reflected and some will continue their journey through. So what's going on in the computer side of this process? Well, the computer records the time taken <clears throat> for the waves to reach the detector. And then it calculates the distance using the equation distance equals speed times time. And the software can then build up a picture of the baby in the womb. And that picture is what we're calling the imaging. We are now seeing what we actually can't see with our eyes. 
Now you may get a question about a baby in the womb. You may get a question about some other organ of the body like a, a lung, a liver, a kidney. And the process is exactly the same. You're going to end up with the ultrasound waves bouncing off the beginning of that organ and then off the end of that organ. And so the computer will be able to give you a picture showing you the size, the shape of that organ and hopefully that will give the, uh, the doctors some idea of whether all is well or whether there is a problem. Now two other examples of uh, this reflection of ultrasound. First of all, uh, in bats. Now bats are able to generate ultrasound waves. And in the left hand picture there you can see the waves have been emitted by the bat. In the right hand diagram you can see the waves have now been reflected back from the moth. The bat picks these up with its ears and the brain of the bat then converts the time to a distance and then its brain actually images where the moth is and this is called echolocation. A second example is uh, using echolocation at sea. So boats and submarines use echolocation to find out how deep the sea is. Fishing boats will use it to find out whereabouts a shoal of fish is. So you need to record the time for the echo to return to the boat. The speed of sound in water is known, that's about 1,500 meters per second. And then your onboard computer will then convert that to the distance using distance equals speed times time. So if an ultrasound pulse took 0.1 seconds to return, how deep is the water? Now you could pause the video there, have a go at that, and then continue to the next slide to see if you got it right. So first of all, you write down what you know. So the time is 0.1 seconds. The speed of sound in water is 1500 meters per second. You know that distance is the speed times the time. So distance is 1500 times 0.1, which gives you 150 meters. Now this then leads you to the main mistake people make in this sort of question. This is actually the distance to the seabed and back. So the water is actually half of that amount of 150 meters. So it is 75 meters deep. Now the rest of this video is a series of past GCSE questions. You'll get a slide with the question on it. And then the next slide will show the answers to those questions. So what we suggest you do is that you pause the video after each question slide, have a go at the question, and then proceed again to see if you got that right. So our first question here shows ultrasound being used to examine the ligament inside the leg of a horse. You've got to use words from the box to complete the following sentences. The something sends pulses of ultrasound into the leg. When the ultrasound meets the ligament, some is reflected back to the blank. The reflected pulses are converted by a blank into an image that can be seen on the screen. So it is the transmitter sends pulses of ultrasound into the leg. Some is reflected back to the detector and the reflected pulses are converted by a computer into an image. First of all, for two marks, explain what ultrasound is. Then we have ultrasound is used for prenatal scanning. 
this is much safer than using x-rays. However, doctors were only sure ultrasound was safe after experiments on mice. You're asked, do you think ultrasound experiments on mice were justified? And explain your answer for two marks. And explain what scientists should do if they find evidence that ultrasound may be harmful to human health. Again, for two marks. So explain what ultrasound is, offer two marks. So you could write down that it's sound with a frequency higher than the human can hear. So that will gain you a mark. And then be specific, that is a frequency of over 20,000 hertz. Those points together get you the two marks. Now for the second part, the mark scheme for the GCSE uh, gives you one mark for making an appropriate point and the second mark for amplifying that point, saying a bit more about it. You're being asked, do you think the experiments were justified? So on each one you should write, I think they are justified. So I've given two examples here. Uh, first one, I think they're justified because other mammals are sufficiently similar to humans, so the results are transferable. Or you could go for something like, I think they're justified because it's unethical to put humans at risk. You could say especially unborn babies. So it is better to experiment on mice. Now there are other possibilities that you could write but they need to be backed up you need to give a justification for your answer now many students go wrong with this uh, question here because they don't realize the limits to which scientists work <coughs> You're being asked to explain what scientists should do if they find evidence that ultrasound may be harmful to human health. Now the examiners said that uh, a variety of responses were allowed and again a valid point gets a mark, amplification gets you the second mark. <clears throat> so the mistake people make is that they say that all oh, scientists should stop using ultrasound and that would be incorrect it's not the scientists who use the ultrasound it's the people in the uh, hospitals that use the ultrasound and the decision whether that's right is made by the management of the hospital not by scientists the function of scientists is to do the experimental work and then to advise those who make decisions and it's important that you have that in your head for this sort of question so a couple of examples of what you could write you, you could say that if they found evidence scientists should publish their evidence so that it may be considered by those who make decisions in medicine or putting it another way scientists should repeat their experiments to ensure that their results are valid and not anomalous due to the effect of uncontrolled variables in this question you're asked to select two numbers for the range of human hearing you're asked for one mark what is ultrasound and then you're being asked to state a medical use for ultrasound so first of all a straightforward two marks for the range of human hearing choose 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz what is ultrasound for one mark I can just write down sound with a frequency of more than 20,000 Hertz I don't have to add a second point as I did in the previous question because that was offering two marks for the same sort of question and then I'm asked for another medical use of ultrasound. You could write down prenatal scanning, or you could say the scanning of babies before they're born. 
The speed of an ultrasound wave into soft tissue in the human body is 1.5 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. The frequency of the wave is 2 times 10 to the power of 6 hertz. You're asked to calculate the wavelength of the ultrasound wave. So here you need to uh, remember your correct equation that links speed of a wave with frequency and wavelength. So first of all we write down what we know. So speed equals 1.5 times 10 to the power of 3 meters per second. The frequency 2 times 10 to the power of 6 hertz. Are they in the correct unit? Yes they are. The equation which you'll recall is wave speed is the frequency multiplied by the wavelength. You need to rearrange that to give you wavelength. So that should be the wave speed divided by the frequency. You insert your numbers, do it on your calculator and you'll end up with 0 0.00075 meters. And because the question is written in standard form, you really ought to put the answer in standard form as well. So that would be 7.5 times 10 to the power of 4 meters. So this question then goes on to talk about another use of ultrasound and that's to find the speed of blood flow in an artery. He uses the word transducer, which you may not have come across before, but the question more or less gives you the, uh, the meaning of that if you go through. So first of all, we've got an ultrasound transducer is placed on a person's arm. Ultrasound is emitted by the transducer and the ultrasound is reflected from the blood cells moving away from the transducer and then the reflected ultrasound is detected at the transducer. So it tells you that the transducer is simply a combined emitter and detector. You've been asked to describe the differences between the ultrasound waves emitted by the transducer and the reflected waves detected at the transducer. So to do this, you need to carefully think about what would happen between one wave hitting a blood cell and then the next wave hitting the same blood cell if that blood cell is moving away from the emitter. Now there are possibly four differences that you could come up with um, between the emitted and the reflected waves. So first of all, the straightforward one, that the waves emitted are traveling in one direction while those detected are traveling in the opposite direction. So that's very, very straightforward. Now the second one, you've got to think about what would happen to one wave front hitting a blood cell and then the next wave front hitting the same blood cell, but in between that blood cell has moved away slightly. Now, if you think that through, you'll realize that that's going to affect the wave length of the returning waves. They're going to have a longer wavelength than the ones that were emitted. Now, if they've got a longer wavelength, it also means that they're going to have a lower frequency. So you can write down the detected waves or the reflected waves have a lower frequency than those emitted. And finally, the waves are transferring energy. As that energy is transferred, some of it will be absorbed by the tissues in the person. And therefore, the reflected wave will be transferring less energy than the emitted one. So you could write something like the waves emitted will be transferring more energy than those detected. This question uses the term high pitched. So bats use the reflection of high pitched sound waves to determine the position of objects. What determines the pitch of a sound wave? Is it the amplitude? Is it the frequency? Or is it the speed? Well, it's going to be the frequency. The amplitude, that will affect how loud the sound is. 
we're being asked here to state the name given to a reflected sound wave. We're asked to calculate the speed of a sound wave given the frequency of the wavelength. And finally, to describe what a longitudinal wave means. So first of all, a reflected sound wave is called an echo. For the calculation, we write down what we know. So frequency is 25 kilohertz and the wavelength is 0.0136 meters. We look at those, have they got the correct units? You say, no, I've got to have my frequency in hertz, not kilohertz. So I know there's a thousand hertz in a kilohertz, so 25 kilohertz is going to be 25,000 hertz. I know that speed is frequency times wavelength, so I take my 25,000, multiply it by 0 0.0136, and I get 340 meters per second. Now, because that number is in the syllabus as the speed of sound, I know that that's going to be pretty well correct. So when describing a longitudinal sound wave, you need to first of all state that in one of these waves, longitudinal waves, the medium is vibrating in the same direction as the wave is traveling, or you could express it as the, the medium is vibrating in the same direction as the energy transfer. You can then add, because you've got two marks to get here, you then mark, uh, add about them being a series of compressions and rarefactions so it goes compression rarefaction compression rarefaction and so on and the wavelength uh, being the distance between two compressions so you've got to ensure you look at the number of marks two marks here so you've got to get two completely separate points you're going to make to gain those two marks so just to round off your, your revision here, um, there are some terms which are used in the, in the specification that was given right at the beginning, and you'd be expected to know what those terms mean. You've got ultrasound, frequency, reflected, medium, media, and imaging. So you could just uh, stop the video here, see if you can write down your definitions, and then compare it with the next slide. So ultrasounds, that sound above the upper limit of human hearing, so it's above 20,000 hertz. Frequency is the number of waves per second, or the number of vibrations per second. Reflected is the word used of waves bouncing off a surface. A medium is the substance that a wave is traveling through, and media is simply the plural of medium. And imaging means converting something that's invisible into something that is visible to our eyes.